Michael Angel, where are we? Uh, we're at the Military History Museum. This is like the main shop. Yeah, this is, this is the main shop called the Warfront. It's all World War II. Um, right, World War II. Um, World War I, World War II, Vietnam, mostly 19th, uh, 20th century military. Here we have all the, all the rifles. And we here we have Michael Angel, who is kind of in the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's this? This must be a, tor a torpedo launcher. This looks like a launcher, am I it's right? It's a German range, a range finder. Oh, a range you finder. Look in here. Yeah. Your vision comes out here. Okay. And it gives you the distance to something. Okay. How far away it is. Okay. So. I'm sorry. What was your name? Andrew. Andrew. Yep. I'm Sandra. Hey, Sandra. And this is Michael Angel. I'm Michael Angel. Yeah. So it's meant for range finder. It's a World War II range finder. Okay. So. Yeah. Oh, and they have the crockery too. Look at that. Yep. That's yeah. old World War II German uh, plates. German plates. Yep. Um, oh, look at the helmet, the, what yep. do they call that? But that's called a Luftschutz helmet. That was meant for like firefighters okay. in World War II in Germany. Okay. They wore those. Um, and then uh, I'll show you, the museum is like the best parts in the back. Okay, okay. <laughs> this we'll take a look this at is our minute. 1943 Kugelwagen. These are made by the Germans in World War II. We made the Jeep, they made this. Right. And they made about 64,000 of these in World War II, 1941, 1945. Uh -huh. We made 640,000 Jeeps, huh. 10 times the amount. We outproduced everybody. But this is basically a Volkswagen Beetle. Okay. That's all it is. Um, it's got a 25 horse engine. Um, it's been restored. It's mostly original, but it's been restored. This is what the German army used as their little vehicle during World War II. Huh. And it runs great. It's a running vehicle. It's street legal. Yeah, I remember the movie um, Indiana Jones and Temple of yep. Doom. You, you kind of remember them driving in these, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Although that, technically they wouldn't have had them because these didn't come out till 41. Oh, and that was before. Indiana right? Jones takes place in the 30s. Okay, all right. <laughs> so that's okay. It's so if fast. you see one of these, it's yeah. it's not, ac it's not accurate. Yeah, it's not. That's yeah. pretty common in movies, though. Yeah, I know. This is, um, all these are artifacts. These are brought back. A lot of the stuff we have is German and Japanese. Mm -hmm. We're brought back by American veterans. So. This, the, these are all German, uh, J I mean, sorry, Japanese items okay. from World War II that right. were captured. Rifle, pistol. Yeah, you have the rising sun. Yep, this flag. is the flag. It was carried by a Japanese pilot. Huh. In, um, the Japanese were right on it. It was very common. Hmm. Um, the but bayonet. The bayonet, the sword, the helmet. Americans love to bring stuff back. A lot of Americans brought these things back. Yeah. So, and then back in here mm -hmm. is our museum. Okay. So, my, my business partner, a friend of mine, myself, have been avid collectors of history. Oh, look at this. Everything in here is original. Okay. okay. So before World War II, which is started in December 7, 1941 for the U.S., the American Army was very small, had about 100,000 men. Uh, and they wore a blue denim work uniform when they were working, yeah, mm -hmm. much like jeans. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very rare because those are hard to find. They phased it out and then they used them all up. You mean the material yeah, or the, material, the, the, material. the outfit? The material. The, out, the outfit. Okay. The outfit itself. It's okay. just denim, but the outfit right. itself is very rare because everyone used them all up. They didn't, you know, save them for later. Mm -hmm. So to find one is really remarkable. It's actually a rare item. Mm -hmm. And then they switched over to this green type uniform for everything. Here shows the U.S. Army in early World War II mm -hmm. with the barracks. Everything's laid out, ready to go. Mm -hmm. And here's this kit all laid out. Um, all set up under inspection. Mm -hmm. So we went from about 100,000 men to 12 million men by the war's end. Wow. Overnight, we built, in three and a half years, a huge army. And now produced, like I said, the Germans built 40-some thousand, 60-some thousand of those. We built over 600,000 of the equivalent type right. vehicle. So our production was just amazing. This shows kind of what the American soldiers looked like in World War II. Mm -hmm. They had a variation combination of cotton and wool uniforms. So these guys are wearing the wool shirt, pants. Mm -hmm. The cotton jacket with a wool lining. Okay. Um, they have the leather two buckle boots, which came in later, mm -hmm. as opposed to the leggings over the boots right there. And this guy has a radio set up. See the small cigarettes on his radio? Yeah. Those were, came in your issue rations. They issued cigarettes to soldiers. <laughs> everybody, everybody smoked back then. So everybody had cigarettes. Another, okay. Well, so pack. the so the packs were how many? Eight, eight, eight of them? cigarettes in there. Eight that, cigarettes. That one came in your rations because <laughs> they gave everybody smoked back then. So yeah, it was yeah. Common. This German flag here yeah. was captured in Italy by an American, and all the guys in his company signed it. Real calm when you capture stuff. You signed it. You signed it. Yeah. Guys loved capturing this stuff. 
Um, they brought brought it back. Yeah. It was captured in Italy, in Italy though, probably 1944. Huh. And then D-Day, when we went south in France in November, in uh, January, I'm sorry, June yeah. of uh, 1944. Okay. This is what the soldiers looked like um, in this uniform here with this equipment, with right. that gas mask bag, um, his life belt, inflatable life belt, all his equipment. And he was also, this guy be wearing the wool underneath that uniform. So all that heavy stuff, they got soaking wet. Yeah. How, okay, so all of that gear, mm -hmm. soaking wet. Equivalent, what would they be carrying? Like 50 oh, pounds, 100 Probably about pounds? 70 pounds of equipment. Dang. Yeah. So a lot of guys, if you watch Sydney and Private Ryan, when they hit the beach, because yeah. they had to cross a lot of open area and they were soaking wet, uh, got rid of their equipment. And when they got up to the front line, they didn't have any equipment. That, yeah. And they had to go back and get it. So a lot of, and a lot of guys drowned. Wow. But they were very heavy loaded because they were going in and we didn't know for how long. I mean, we were hoping to stay, but mm -hmm. it was a battle. So, and this shows the Coast Guard men. The Coast Guard drove all the small boats going in on D-Day. Okay. And that's what they would look like. A lot of guy, a lot of Coast Guardsmen were killed on that day. Mm. Um, and the Coast Guard drove boats all through the war mm -hmm. for the Pacific Islands and the, um, mm. and then and this is our German soldier. Okay. This is late in the war. And the Germans in movies all look with nice collars and mm -hmm. pretty uniforms. Mm -hmm. But by late in the war, they had really switched out to more practical uniform, combat uniforms. Mm -hmm. they, they developed camouflage. Um, there's a German radio, which is kind of rare. They didn't use a lot of radios, but so, that's what they look like late in the war. Again, everything in here is authentic. Yep, authentic. It's now, not a replica no, replication. No, Now, these two guns mm -hmm. are deactivated. They're okay. real guns, but they can't fire. The, the guts have been destroyed, okay. so you can't make, make them fire. Right. So we pride ourselves. Everything here is original. Okay. And then we, we, I've been studying a lot of the German uh, tropical uniforms in the North Africa campaign. Mm -hmm. So the first time we fought the Germans was in North Africa. Okay. We went in 1942. And the Germans developed uniforms specifically for hot weather and tropical conditions. Right. Because tropical conditions in hot, hot desert is not just hot, it's also cold. It ranges. You go, to the, you go to the U.S. desert, it ranges. So they had warm and cold clothes for the desert. Right. This is their what they call the tropical uniform, though. Another, and a lot of variations of the tall boots they had. They designed yeah. these large boots to protect your legs from critters and brush. Mm. Um, they had shorts, jackets, um, variations in it. The German Air Force had a separate tropical uniform. And then this shows and the guys surrendering. They had the wool tropical overcoat. So World War II ended in May of 1945. The war ended. Mm -hmm. But in May of 43, two years before, the German army in North Africa surrendered to the U.S. and the British. And we cut them off. They couldn't get any supplies. They surrendered peacefully. 235,000 Germans surrendered in May of 1943 mm -hmm. to the U.S. And most of them went to the U.S. as prisoners. By the end of World War II, there were 500,000 German prisoners mm -hmm. in the U.S., mostly working on farms. Mm -hmm. Half a million Germans were in this country during the war as prisoners. Wow. And we shipped them back after the war. Right. But, um, and, this here is a, a tribute to two guys we knew who are both veterans of World War II. Mm -hmm. um, there are the uniforms. This gentleman, James Downs, uh, was a Portland, Oregon uh, resident. He flew uh, 25 missions in a B-17 with the 91st Bombardment Group in Europe. This is his uniform mm -hmm. donated to us. Mm -hmm. And then this gentleman here, Jack Young, also flew, uh, I think he flew 30 missions. And, mm. and as a bomber crewman in right. World War II in the 8th Air Force. Uh, Paint their jackets. Is, it was real common. Okay. That's in 1944, or okay. 45 when he came home. There okay. he is with his mom. The front of the jacket looks like this with the bomb missions. Uh -huh. And it's, like, it's a nice shape because he didn't use it in the plane. He just wore it on the oh, ground. So in the front, they would say, mm -hmm. they would count how many missions yep. they did by putting a bomb. So if you turn this around, this is what this jacket looks like okay. with his name on it and the bomb advise each mission. Okay. There he is with his mom when he came home to oh. Portland, Oregon. And there's the original jacket. Me with mom. Huh? Yeah, so he kept his jacket, which is really neat to have this. Right. One. This is a German uh, Allgemeine SS uniform, okay. which the, the German elite would wear. Mm -hmm. And it's dated 1938, mm -hmm. came out of Munich. And what's unique about it is uh, uh, this gentleman, uh, James Wade. He was an officer with the 61st, 61st uh, Infantry Division, he, or 60, 60, 63rd Infantry Division. He brought this home from Germany at the end of the war. Look at these three pictures on the top there. Mm -hmm. That's him in the middle. The, Those are his two friends. That's the officer, the German officer no, of the no. war? That's James that's Wade. That's James Wade. Putting, he put it on oh, okay. as a joke. 
So him and his buddies put it, both put it on. <laughs> this is James Wade right here in 1945. Okay. There he is. Okay. But he brought that home. Hmm. And uh, it's on loan to us. So it was oh. really cool to have that. Yeah. He thought to bring in the hat and the tunic. Um, but that's the German um, the official boots. uniform yeah. that he found. And then this shows, this kind of shows our Air Corps impression. What guys looked like, a pilot would look like. That's his inflatable life jacket. Mm -hmm. Here's the map. Here's his parachute. There's the, they started wearing armored suits in the aircraft because the flak explosions were wounding so many men. Mm. We came up with armor to, to wear in the aircraft to protect the guys. There's his extra parachute, they're two different types. There's the door from a B-17 bomber. <laughs> um, this is his throat mic. So the way they talk is you had a microphone on your throat and you'd key it and it would put voice through it into your intercom system. Huh. And this shows our uh, kind of, see, we want to build out more. Here's the Pacific. Mm -hmm. That's the Marine Corps. They had a different uniform than the Army. Different, different cut, different boots, different helmet covers. The Marines had six divisions in the in the Pacific, and they only fought in the Pacific. The Marines did not fight in Europe. No. Oh. Uh, and then here's the U.S. Navy. Okay. Kind of the working uniform, and here's yeah. a Navy pilot. Yeah. Uh, and this shows peace, end of the war, coming home. Get to remember, about uh, 12 million men served in the military, and a lot of them came home at the same time in 45. And this shows, like, here's a Japanese sword he brought home. They brought home, a lot of them brought home souvenirs, mm -hmm. and kind of shows the coming home. Yeah. And we're going to expand more on this, but this, we've got some Vietnam stuff we're going to set up, and some World War One stuff we're going to set up. Nice. For, um, My dad for, used to be in the Navy. Yeah. And he would tell me that, um, and now when I was growing up, in, you know, in the 70s, we, the fashion was bell-bottom pants. Mm -hmm. And he would be like, I don't know why that's coming back into fashion. We oh, used yeah. to wear that in the Navy because, of course, if they, if they uh, were bombed or whatever, and they landed in the water, they, what was it? Something about taking the pants off easier with the bell bottoms. Yeah, yeah, they of, come off easier. They come off easier. And you know why you take your pants off in the water? Because it would weigh you down? No. No. Your pants are a life jacket. Oh, did, your we, did, we, did you ever learn that? Your pants yeah. are a life jacket. Did you learn how to do that? Really? Yeah. No, I, I don't know many people don't know this trick. They would not know this. Okay. They didn't teach you that? No. You take your pants off. Yeah. You tie the legs together. Okay. You blow into your pants, they inflate. Oh my gosh. Okay. They didn't teach you that? No. Well, I, I learned that. that. That's a big, that's, yeah, no. you turn your pants into a life jacket. Okay, then how about the top part? You would tie that off as well? Well, you just, you have the legs sticking up like this. Okay. And you put yourself between the legs. Okay. American well, Red Cross will teach you that. Okay. American that's, Red Cross swimming class will so teach you that. So that's why trick. they wanted to be able to take it off you, uh, easy so it's a life jacket. You tie jacket. the legs together, you mm -hmm. pull the pants like this, and you right. blow up into them. Okay. And the legs inflate. It'll wow. leak, but it'll slowly leak. It'll keep you afloat. It'll keep you afloat. Yeah. Okay. That makes